Hey everyone, welcome to WPF Tutorials and today we're going to talk about the layout system in WPF. Before WPF we used Windows Forms to create user interfaces with controls such as buttons, text boxes, and labels, and other things. Um, those controls were positioned on the form using coordinates which made it really hard to create user interfaces that adjusted properly when content in the window changed, the window resized, or non-local languages were used. Now, the new and improved layout system allows for flowing dynamic layouts, and this results in very graceful adjusting when windows resize, the languages change, or the display resolutions change. So in order to help us manage our layout, WPF gives us access to several layout containers such as the stack panel, the dock panel, the wrap panel, the canvas, grid, and others out there. And we're going to go over all these in the coming episodes. Um, but I have a list of key pointers that we need to keep in mind when we're creating a layout. The first is elements should not be given an exact size, but should grow to fit their container. So as an example of this, I have a very simple grid that I created that has a stack panel in the center of it with a background color of green. You can see here that the alignments are set to stretch, so when the grid resizes, the stack panel inside of it is going to resize too. And here we have that stack panel with the background color of green resizing. The next point I want to make is that layout containers do their best to fit their children in the containers at their requested dimensions. If it can't, the portion that's too big will get cut off. So you can see here in the first cell of the grid I have a stack panel with four text blocks stacked on top of each other. And as you can see the last one which doesn't have enough room gets cut off. The third point I want to make is to let the elements position themselves relative to other elements in the container rather than using exact screen coordinates. And that layout containers can be nested to achieve more complex layouts. So I'm going to cover these last two points together with this one example. You see here a mock-up of a login screen. What I did here was I centered a stack panel in the middle of the window and to illustrate the nesting of layout containers notice that there are three elements in this stack panel. You have a text block that says please log in and then there are two more stack panels. To show elements positioning themselves relative to other elements notice how I changed the orientation in these two other stack panels to horizontal. This allows the text blocks and the text boxes to get positioned on the page without ever having to position elements with exact coordinates. So how's all this working? Well, the layout system works in two passes. The first pass is the measure pass, where each container loops through its child elements, getting the requested dimensions from each element. And then there's the arrange pass, where the system places the elements in the appropriate position, and if all elements can't fit in the container, the portions of the children that can't fit will not be visible. So today we learned that we should let elements position themselves on the window and not try to force it by using exact coordinates. We also learned how the layout container and its child elements relate to each other, and we talked about the two stages the layout system goes through when positioning elements. Alrighty, that's all I've got for today. I appreciate your feedback and suggestions. As always, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and see you next time.